What's going on, it's Darren Sims, and today I got a slightly different video for you, almost a vlog style video where I'm gonna be showing you how I create my YouTube videos. I'm gonna take you from start to finish and show you the entire process that I go through. I'm gonna show you all the gear that I use to sync the guitar, the voice, the camera angles, and get the colors and all of that stuff. Since YouTube is a video platform, this is a very important process to my video making, and in fact, I've probably spent about two thirds of the time on the video side of things versus the actual guitar playing side. And sometimes I do even get questions on what gear I use, how do I sync up all the parts, the guitar, the voice, the camera angles. So hopefully in this video, I'll be able to answer some of those questions. Let's get started. Before shooting any video, I of course need an idea and some creativity. So I'll tend to think of say 10 ideas and jot them down in this beautifully pink book and then narrow that down to about five ideas that I think are really cool and you guys will really enjoy. And then I'll further expand on those ideas with some key bullet points that I wanna portray in the video. Maybe I'll create a transcript or a tab if necessary. As I've got beneath here, I've got heaps and heaps of paperwork for future videos. And this is the stuff that I obviously go over in the videos, but I also release to my Patreon supporters. Sometimes preparation can take no time at all, like this one where I'm just setting up the camera and talking to you guys. But unfortunately, the majority of videos that I make actually take a few days to prepare for, since I have to usually create an introduction piece to the video that demonstrates what I'm talking about. Maybe I also need to create some sort of sub examples throughout the video, and then I need to transcribe all of that onto tab for my Patreon supporters. And obviously I want that introduction piece to be really good so that it draws in viewers and grabs your attention before I even say the first word. So I've decided that today I'm gonna to be filming a video called How to Solo with Chord Changes. I would have already published that video by the time I published this video. But let me give you an insight on what camera gear I use now. So the main camera that I use is what I'm holding right now, which is the Canon 80D. Let me show you this in the mirror. I've got a kind of vlog style setup going on here and then on top of that is the microphone that I use for the voice and that's a Rode VideoMic Pro. The lens that I actually use for my videos is this one here. This is a Sigma 18 to 35 mil f 1.8 lens which is great for low lighting. My second choice for lens would be this Canon 50 mil f 1.8 again. This is a bit better for more close-up angles of the neck and my fingers since it's got a closer focal range. And then moving on from the main camera as a secondary camera I use this Canon G7X which is actually Laura's camera it's just a sort of point and shoot style thing here but the greatest thing is that it's a jack of all trades if you like and it's got this flip up screen so that I can actually see myself whilst I film. I got a few other little things on this shelf here like the Steadicam which I use for image stabilization scenes and uh, some b-roll. The little LED panel here that I don't often actually use since I actually have two soft boxes. There's one and there's another one. And then over here I have two tripods, a nice short one which I set the G7X on for close-up angles. That one moves around wherever I want it for the close-up angle. This one here is for my ADD, that stays there right butted up against the wall. And then lastly, this is a boom stand where I sit the Rode VideoMic Pro, which is on the camera right now. And I'll bring this as close as I can to me without it showing on the camera frame because the closer it is, the better clarity my voice is. And you know, the farther away it is, the more ambience it's gonna pick up in the room, which we don't want. So that's just about everything that I use for the filming side of things. Let's now set that up. Here we are. This is the setup for my videos. At the moment, you'll probably notice that it looks very dull, very boring, very dark even. And I'm currently using the lights that are just in the room. So we're gonna swap that now and use the soft boxes that I have and also add a little bit more color to the background. So I'm gonna change the orange that you see behind the desk here to, let's choose a color. There we go, that looks a lot better. In contrast, the orange, let's turn that one on now. Boom, there we go. As you can see, that's very, very overexposed. So I need to bring the ISO down on the camera a little bit. Boom. There we go, it's looking a bit smoother now. 
That's perfect, spot on. So in doing that, you can obviously see that I'm a lot darker now, which is not good. So I need some light coming from the front, hence why I'm gonna turn on the soft boxes. So we go from this to this. This looks a lot better, you can see me a lot better, you can see the background. There's a few colors going on, we got some orange, we got some blue, some yellow of course, and then me. Now we're not quite done yet, there are two more things that I need to talk about. And one of them is that I need to plug my guitar in, fire up Logic Pro and just record at the same time that I do the video. Now I'll usually fire that up in the background and then hide the screen so that you can't actually see I'm recording the guitar, because I kind of like these desktop wallpapers here and they add a bit more color into the scene. So right now I'm going to go ahead and film today's video and then I'm going to take you to the computer and show you how I go about doing the next steps. Alrighty, so let me take you through the post production process here. Now I load up all my clips into Final Cut Pro, all of the clips from the main camera, the close up angle, the guitar part from Logic Pro, any sound effects that I might use in the video and then I create what's called a multicam clip. So what this does, if I grab a scene here, as you can see, I've got the two angles, the close-up angle and the main angle, and then this is the actual Logic Pro guitar file. And as the clip plays, I have the power to select which angle I wanna see in live view, which is great. That's very helpful and it speeds up the editing process massively because back in the day when I first created videos I would have to sync all of this up manually and that was probably the most time consuming part. So I'm very grateful that we're in 2018 and I can do this stuff now. So that's the first thing that I would do, create my multicam clip, uh, set the angles, you know, go through it in live mode, cut, copy, paste, do all that stuff, which is what you see on screen. I've got all of these clips all pre-cut and ready to go. And then, let me first talk about the opening scene here. So this has already been color corrected and graded, and you can see it's a very, very close up angle. It appears that somebody's holding the camera, and that's right, Laura is actually managing this camera. This is on the steady cam and just gives it that more live feel as if you're there. I like that, we're working on that, we're trying to develop that into something that's very visually appealing at the moment. And then moving on to the actual majority of the video here, let's choose uh, a frame. So here's a frame. If I double click that, boom, so you can see I've got a bunch of angles here at the top. This is the guitar, of course, and then this is the close-up angle and then the main angle. So what I'm going to talk you through now is the color correction and the color grading process that I go through once all of the clips are in their place. Now the reason that I even need to color correct and grade my footage is because I shoot in a flat profile. And what that means is it's a very dull, washed out feel. And that's perfect, that's exactly what I want because that gives me the control over the post-processing. So if I want to balance the colors as best as I can and have full control over the saturation of the video, I can do that. Versus if I shoot in Canon's straight, standard, neutral profile, I don't have as much control over the colors because Canon have already determined the colors for me. So it's my personal preference to have that control over the footage. I much prefer to actually correct and grade the footage myself. So if I take a frame, let's take that frame where, um, well, let's take this one, cool. So I'm gonna take the main camera angle here. Now the first thing that I do is sharpen the image since on the flat profile it's a very unsharp image. So here we go, small difference there. And then we add some saturation as well as bringing up the highs and the lows. So if I turn that on, I've already done this of course, if I just slick that on, as you can see it's a massive, massive difference. I've brought those highlights up, brought the shadows down, you know, adjusted the mid-tone mid slightly, added some saturation in particularly the mids and the highlights. Again, before, after, massive, massive difference already there. The next thing that I do is add a color curve. Now this is just to add a bit of contrast to the footage. So if I turn that on, as you can see, again, it just really pulls those highs a little bit higher, pulls the lows a little bit lower, and gives a bit of contrast, particularly to my face so that it doesn't look washed out. And then, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with the color correction. I think the colors are very true there. The yellows are yellow, the reds are red, um, all of that stuff and then I go for the grade. So if I turn that on, as you can see, it's a very, very small adjustment there. If anything, it makes me look slightly darker, slightly more tanned. So that's everything that I would do there with the color correction and grading. So again, 
before, after. And I just love that freedom and control that I have. And since I really enjoy the whole YouTube thing and videography and creating video, I don't mind doing this extra work because I do find it really enjoyable and I learn a lot from doing it. So let's move on to the second angle now. So if I swap angles, here we go. Here's our close up angle. And that is the second stage to creating the post processing. The most important stage, in fact. This project is actually a nice, clean and tidy project. Some projects are massive and have heaps of annotations on top and additional transitions and sound effects that I put on top of the video just to give it that little bit of extra engagement and visual aesthetics. So I believe that's everything that I want to mention in today's video. Hopefully it's given you a bit of insight into how I make my YouTube videos. But uh, most importantly, I want you to realize that it's taken me years of learning and earning to get to this stage. It's thanks to my Patreon supporters and people who buy my courses and things like that, that I'm able to afford some of this gear and consistently improve the quality and content of my videos. So thanks you guys. Back in the day before I had any of this gear, I would just use what I had. So I would use my phone, my iPhone 4S or whatever it was. Maybe I'd borrow a camera off my parents. But I used what I had in the moment and worked my way up to where I am now and I'm still not where I want to be. I'm still working on developing my work here for YouTube but this is a great checkpoint and I look forward to a year down the line looking back on this video and seeing how I've progressed. So that's enough talking from me. Hopefully I've given you a bit of insight on a behind the scenes how I make my YouTube videos. But I hope you enjoyed and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.